Good morning, Year 6. I hope that you had a great day yesterday and that you enjoyed all of your new learning and um, you enjoyed learning about um, decimals, two decimal points, hundredths, and your new monsters topic in English. So, happy Tuesday. Today we're going to carry on in maths with our decimal work today. So, today we are going to be looking at thousandths. So this is very similar to hundredths as you'll see in a minute. Now again the white rose learning video is really useful so make sure that you have a look at that before you try the activities and as always try that first sheet first and if you want to have a go at the challenge have a go at the challenge as well. All right now I've got a bit of an example here. They're the numbers that are used on the white low rose video and they're showing you visual rep representations so instead of me going over that I just want to go back to the place value chart with it because I don't tend to explain that and that's the way that we've looked at our decimals this year and I know that you did in year five as well so have a look at the video for the visual representations and then um, have a little think about what I'm doing today as well okay so we've got three numbers here. We've got 2.693 and 1.306 and 0.286. So I am putting them in my place value chart. So the first one that I am looking at is 2.693. And if you have a look at that, we've got the decimal. So we've got our columns on our place. So we've got ones, tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. Okay, so I'm going to put, I've got two holes, haven't I? So I've got 2.6 tenths, nine hundredths, and three thousandths. All right, that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? We know that. But then we hear we've got 1.306. So for that one, again, we've got one whole. We've got one in the ones column. And then we've got a point, a zero, a decimal point. And then we've got three tenths. But then we've got a zero there. Now, sometimes we might get a bit confused with this and maybe put the six next in the place value um, chart. So it's really important that you look at that and you say there's no hundredths in that column. And so you put the zero in the hundredths column and the six in the thousands. That can trick you out a little bit, that zero. So really put that as that placeholder all of the time. That placeholder is really important because that's the hundredths column, okay? And then we've got 0 0.286. So we haven't got a hole there, have we? So we put 0 point and we've got 2 tenths, 8 hundredths and 6 thousandths. So I think when you look at it on the place value chart, it really makes it clear for you. And then we are going to, next week we're going to be looking, well not next week because it's half term, but the week after, we're going to be looking at decimals and fractions. So at the bottom here, I've just shown you what these would be as a fraction, just to make it clear again so that you can link them all up together, link all these ideas together. So we've got two holes and then we've got 693 thousandths. So we've got that two as the whole number. So we've got a mixed number there. Remember our fraction work? We're building on it all the time. So two whole numbers and then we've got 693 thousandths. Okay. And then we look at the 1.306. So we've got one whole number, 306 thousandths. Remember that zero has to stay in. That's the hundredths column. There is no hundredths, but there is six thousandths, okay? And then 0 0.286, we've got no holes, okay? No holes, so that is 286 thousandths. Okay, so I think really when we look at that, that makes it a lot clearer. And you're going to be having a look at visual representations like I did at White Rose. And that, that does actually show you how the thousands and the hundreds and the tenths all work together. However, this is another strategy, like I will show you, of how to look at thousands. Okay, so I hope that helps you a little bit. So, 
Yesterday we started our monsters text. Okay, so you looked at um, an explanation text on swamp monsters, and you looked at the features of swamp monsters um, of the text. Okay, so I hope you've got it quite clear in your head now about how we write an explanation text. You know, we've got to hook that reader, and that we've got to clearly organise our paragraphs. Now on that text that you looked at yesterday. There wasn't subheadings, okay? So um, it wasn't organized into subheadings, but the information was clearly um, explained, wasn't it? And it was all put in um, groups of information. So what they eat, what they look like, but there wasn't a slide heading. What they used instead is something called a topic sentence. Okay, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So we're going to do activity five today. And I know that you're going to love this because I've got some fantastic examples for you and you're really going to love doing these. So what is a topic sentence? A topic sentence is a sentence that comes at the beginning of a paragraph that's going to explain what you're going to be talking about in that paragraph. So you have a sentence and then you explain about what that sentence is. So quite simply, if we're looking at swamp monsters, you could put as your topic sentence, you could put, can you guess what swamp monsters eat? question mark and then in that paragraph you would write about what the swamp monsters eat so that's another way of organizing your information about the swamp monsters without putting side headings and you can come up with topic sentences of whatever you want to so they're really exciting and they I think they give you a lot of power over what you're writing and also it shows it's more personal than rather than just putting a uh, subheading you can you can really um, think of some interesting things to write and you're also good at that. So have a look at those examples on um, page nine and 10, and then have a go. There's some pictures, and I want you to write some topic sentences about those. They're fab, so really enjoy doing that, okay? Now, what? that's the morning's lesson, quickly over and done with. And what are we doing this afternoon? Well, it's Tuesday and it's PSHE. So I've got two things in um, PSHE this afternoon because I fell in love with something last week and I wanted to share it with you. And it was something called Under the Love Umbrella. Okay, and it's a book and it is the most beautiful book about something called The Love Umbrella. So, I'd like you to access the link, okay, there's an audio of The Love Umbrella, and I'd like you to listen to it. And then I've got the most wonderful activity. I want you to create your own love umbrella. So whether you do that as a diagram, there is a link as well, there's an attachment for that as well. Or if you wanted to make a 3D, if you wanted to do painting, whatever you want to do, you fantastic artist, year six, so you can do whatever you want. But oh, it's so beautiful. And I think you are going to absolutely love it. All right, love the love umbrella. All right, so have a go at that first. And then we're carrying on with our work on emotions and feelings. And this week we're talking about uncomfortable feelings. So sometimes we have feelings that leave us feeling a bit uncomfortable. So we have happy feelings, which is um, joy, happiness, yeah. And But then sometimes we have uncomfortable feelings that don't lie quite very well with us. And um, we, we might struggle with those a little bit. For example, anger, jealousy. And what we're going to do today is think about how we can deal with those feelings and some strategies of what we can do to deal with those uncomfortable feelings, okay? There's also an extra support page for you if you want to have a look at that as well. So 
it's really thinking you don't have to do an activity with the uncomfortable feelings I always think with PSHE we do a lot of talking in class around the topics okay so you've got the activity for the love umbrella but I think for uncomfortable feelings it might be something nice to go through with a sibling or a parent or somebody that you're at home with and just talk about uncomfortable feelings uncomfortable feelings what the differences are between them and what you can do to help with those feelings because year six they are completely normal feelings everybody has those feelings so it's nothing to feel bad about when you have those feelings it's just knowing about the best way of dealing with them so I hope that you find that interesting and I really hope that it helps you to deal with those feelings as they come along so that's today it's going to be a fantastic day isn't it so much to do all right, so have a great day, and as always, just do your best. That's all I ask for, because you're all absolutely brilliant, and you are all superstars. Okay, enjoy your day. Lots of love. Take care. Bye-bye.